perfectly pan-seared juicy steak with garlic crisps and a savoury dressing packed full of umami, this is my version of beef tataki. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another Walk Wednesdays and we are here at Covent Garden at School of Walk at London's Asian uh, Cookery School and we are making beef tataki, one of my favourite things to um, eat, snack on, etc. Um, we are just going to start by prepping some garlic. You need to finally, finally um, slice down your garlic. I've got a pan heating up but let's just do the garlic first and then we'll just crack on with things. Um, so, garlic finely sliced or finely chopped up to you um, I would just say if you can or if you're happy with using a mandolin you go ahead and do that um, I just find that sometimes with a mandolin it can be quite sharp so um, if you are doing it on the mandolin uh, just be really really careful okay um, but I find that just with even with a sharp knife it's okay you can just get really really thinly cut um, garlic Right, so my pan is fairly hot. I'm just gonna get some oil in there. You need plenty of oil in there because we are going to essentially kind of shallow fry these um, garlic slices. So if you're not sure, just maybe drop one in. Just kind of see, if you see a little tiny bit of bubble, then you pretty much are good to go. Be really careful though, garlic can burn very quickly. So you don't want too high a temperature. If you find that it's browning a little bit too quickly for you just turn off the heat and just let that kind of settle down a little bit okay so I'm just kind of moving them around a little bit just to make sure that um, they're not burning obviously keep an eye on the smaller tinier bits of garlic um, definitely don't want them to burn because once they're burned you will have that bitter taste or that bitter um, flavor through um, bitter taste running through it um, so they've just turned lightly golden brown I'm going to turn off the heat now because um, as with anything kind of shallow fried or deep fried, they will continue to cook, okay, uh, even though um, they're out of the oil. So the browning continues um, after you've stopped the cooking. So make sure you get them out just before they get to that color that you want. So I'm just going to scoop them out with a little spoon. And you need to pretty much be quite quick with this because otherwise they will just... Um, Go a little bit too dark but they should smell pretty good one really important thing as well um, don't throw away the oil that you've just used to deep fry the um, garlic you definitely want to save that just let that cool down and then just kind of carefully um, pour that into a bowl or something like that um, because that is great flavor you do not want to waste any of that and you can use that as a flavoring oil for any of your stir fries, um, anything like that, even salad dressings, etc. So um, then what you want to do is just make sure your pan is nice and clean. Um, get that back on the heat, super hot heat here, um, because what we're going to do is we are going to sear off our steak. So we're using some rump steak here today. You could use, obviously, um, fillet of beef, um, but I just kind of think rump steak usually has a little bit more um, flavor to it, a little bit more fat as well compared to just um, beef fillet. So important thing when it comes to um, pan frying steaks, I'm sure you know this already, but just a little bit of a reminder, you wanna make sure you pat down really well, um, get rid of any excess moisture that's on the surface of your um, steak or on your meat, because that is not going to fry up well, it's not going to brown well unless you take off any excess, okay? Um, so just pat down, make sure it's nice and dry, pan is on a hot heat and then we are just literally going to let that just kind of come up to temperature once it starts to vaguely smoke or just smoke a little bit then you know okay you're pretty good to go i'm um, pretty much good to go um i am going to now get a little bit of salt just going to season this up some salt and also plenty of black pepper it can take it okay steak can take a lot of seasoning so don't be shy with the pepper now pan is a little bit hot now i'm just going to get a tiny bit of oil in there midge of oil just to stop any sticking um, and then straight in with the steak and it should have a nice sizzle and then we're just going to leave that to cook for a good minute or two okay get some nice color some nice browning there on that steak look at that crust baby so I've just turned the steak over and it's both sides are lovely and caramelized. That's absolutely what you want. 
and then straight out onto a clean plate and you want to just make sure you don't spend too much time cooking this steak because a beef tataki you kind of want it sort of medium rare, rare-ish so therefore hot pan really helps to just kind of give it a seal without overcooking in the middle bit. The next bit you just want to leave it to rest um, either at room temperature or if you want it a little bit firmer for slicing, you could also just get it into a fridge, which is um, not what we're going to do because this is a fairly thin stick, so I think we should be fairly fine. But you definitely want to leave it to rest for a bit um, before you start slicing it. In the meantime, we're going to start prepping a few of the garnishes. Right, so for the garnish, we're just going to do um, finely sliced spring onions. You could obviously um, also use um, some chives. So anything that's kind of green tends to work quite well because it's a nice contrast in terms of colour. So next up, uh, after you've done the spring onions or the chives, um, we're just going to make a really easy kind of dressing to go on top of the tataki. Um, that's a classic, um, some sake, about 60 mils of sake, roughly. I mean, it's all kind of, you know, to taste. Um, I've got some light soy sauce as well, so that's going to be a little bit more salt as well to go in. This is probably quite a lot of dressing to go over the top, but you know what, we're just going to go for it. And any extra, you can just always just keep in the fridge for the next time you want to make a salad dressing. We've got some uh, caster sugar to go in as well. And then just kind of temper the sugar a little bit. We're just going to also get some lime juice in. You could also use, if you fancy using things like um, yuzu juice, if you have yuzu, um, if you have some fancy yuzu juice um, in your fridge. Okay, so get that in there. And then just kind of give it a really good mix and then just have a taste of it. Make sure that it's nicely balanced as well. You want a bit of that salty, sweet, um, tangy going on there. So I will just have a quick taste. Just really want to make sure when you're stirring this, get all that sugar really nicely dissolved as well. Mmm. I think it could do a little bit more with a little bit more uh, lime juice in there. It's kind of a bit of tanginess just to combat that fattiness from the, um, the steak. Oh yeah, mm. punchy. Mm. Love it. Right, so time to slice up the steak now. So it's rested for a few minutes. Um, so you definitely want to rest your steak um, just before slicing. And you'll see and you'll notice also quite all of the juices will have run out. Keep those juices on later as well they'll be great to go on top of your uh, steak so looking at my steak I've got two bits here and um, plus I've got this gristle that's kind of running over the top here this band of gristle I'm just not gonna I'm just going to take this off that can be you know this trimmings for the doggy or for the chef it's going to remove that as well um, so you've got two bits of um, steak and then what you want to do is very thinly just kind of slice the steak. So um, beautifully sliced beef and we're just going to pour, remember the juices I talked about, we're just going to get the juices there on the top and obviously then followed by your lovely dressing and you want plenty of that because that then gets served with the slices of beef and every slice should have a little bit of that dressing over there and then finally you're just going to go with maybe some of your garnish of garlic and followed by your spring onions again just looking out for contrast in color and then finally i've just got some uh, toasted bits of sesame seeds just to kind of go on top as a most delicate kind of garnish just to finish off and there you go so that is your beef tataki mm. thank you so much for watching and tune in next week for the next episode of what wednesdays until then take good care and i'll see you soon oh and also don't forget to like subscribe and um, comment